All right, so we are working on this 1958 bubble window Isetta with the Z molding. This is a very, very beautiful Isetta. It's almost over restored. It has a lot of features and accessories that most Isettas don't have. Uh, one being the Z mold. See how it makes the Z right there? And the splash guards, well, the, uh, uh, what do you call them? Mud guards, mud flaps as well as the stone guards, the, the aluminum pieces there behind the front wheels. Those are just some accessories that we can uh, immediately see. Also, he's got the um, rear brake light there, which has got a crack in it, so there's a piece of cellophane tape holding it together. But I wanna go uh, or show you an undercarriage little video tutorial on this Isetta. Uh, it's highly polished on the top side, and highly polished on the underside. And I'm gonna turn my light on here so you can look underneath, give it a good inspection. Look up the skirt, if you might say, of this I said to see what makes it tick. Uh, one thing you may notice is the rear end. This is the stock rear chain case for an Isetta, but you can see it's polished. It's normally rough aluminum, and this one has been polished uh, chrome-like, uh, kind of a satin chrome, beautiful. Uh, the way it shines. Um, of course, new brake hoses. On an, every Isetta, there's only one brake on, to the rear wheel. It's basically a fixed rear end. In other words, like what they call a uh, live axle, I guess you'd say. Uh, the chain, which comes from the engine, comes around a gear, which, which is in an enclosed case. This is the oil level. It's how you check the oil for the chain case and it's a solid rear end is what I'm trying to say. And partly why the two tires are so close together is when you go around corners, the difference, uh, or what we call a differential action doesn't need to come into play. It can kind of just skid and skip along. The front tires you can see, you can see there, are quite a bit further apart. And a lot of people think that I said it's only have one rear wheel. Some of the British ones do, but the American ones all have two wheels. So let's keep going, let's, let's do a, uh, a little undercarriage inspection of this Isetta. It's highly polished, like I said, on the underside. It's a really good one to do a little tour. So as I was talking about, there is a brake only on one side. You can see the backing plate, the adjuster, uh, the wheel cylinder, and then on this side, there is nothing. It's just a trailer, basically. So we've got our chain case with live axle, which is enclosed with oil. We've got our gas shock absorbers. That's these blue things here. And of course there are two of those because the axle can fluctuate this way or that way. Um, and then what, what actually powers the axle, let's see if we can get up in there and look, are these couplings. So this is your transmission. This is a short little stub shaft of a drive shaft. And there's what are called guibos. They're rubber uh, insulators. When you rotate the drive shaft like that, you can see how it has to be able to flex with ease. I've done another video on Isetos on how to up grade those to the polyurethane ones and line up that drive shaft for less rolling resistance. We're not going to touch on that in this video. Here is your drive uh, case stabilizer rod, your leaf springs which have been powder coated. We have our frame and then if we go back up in here, get my light up in there, this will be your gas tank and this is the air inlet, in other words, for the carburetor, for the air filter, the air is actually drawn around this license plate light assembly through this tube and then into the air filter canister. Oops, big shadow. The air filter canister, which is here, which then goes to the carburetor. It's filtered air. We have our metal mud flaps. You can see the tires have spit a little mud on there. The whole underside of this car has been Rhino line, it's beautiful up in there. Really, really nice. Let's get up to the uh, the meat and potatoes is what I call it. So we've got our transmission here. It's grounded with a ground strap. Transmission and the engine are separated right here. This is your engine oil sump. It's a one cylinder, 300 cc overhead cam, air cooled engine. Produces about 13 horsepower. All that power then goes through a four-speed H-pattern transmission. That's your clutch lever there on the very end. 
goes through the shaft, through the chain case, and out to the rear wheels. Pretty simple. All your, um, uh, what am I trying to say? Your clutch cable, your uh, shifter linkage, all run around this side and through the cockpit. We are now into the floor of the car. You're sitting right about there. The battery is underneath your seat in this box, which typically they rust out. This one's been replaced. And then we're gonna go toward the front of the car. And we've got our steering knuckles, which are big aluminum things that house the oil. They are oil filled, oil dampened uh, knuckles. Um, so your shocks have more dampening qualities and I guess they lubricate the kingpins. It's kind of got a double wishbone type of assembly here. Um, kingpins, which allow the front wheels to pivot. And then there's a spring for each uh, of these big knuckles on each side. It's kind of an ingenious little contraption. It's very compact. Um, and then our steering box, which basically is directly out of the car, comes in here to basically a worm drive and then goes, basically turns our, uh, I can show you here, goes to a little shaft here, which then turns this wheel, which is connected by a drag link. Super simple. This is our pedal box area. We have our clutch, our brake, and our gas. Our master cylinder is located right next to the battery underneath the seat. It's connected via a long rod, which comes from the pedal, as well as the clutch rod and a gas pedal. Super simple, super duper simple. This car is equipped with radial tires. Most of the original ones only had bias ply. It does have juice brakes. Like I said, there's a master cylinder there. Super duper simple. This is a really good car to do an undercarriage inspection because it's so highly polished and uh, beautiful. So hopefully you learned something today. Uh, what a nice set looks like from the bottom side, not the top side. And I think you've seen plenty of my videos for driving around these little cars on the top side. Again, this is a bubble, the big glass window. This one here is a standard. No uh, big bubble and sliding windows. So, okay, that's your tip and trick for today. Hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comments down below. Thank you. We'll see you next time.